Hey everybody, you know, I am really surprised at the number of people I talk to when I'm out on the trail that ask me why I'm not disconnecting when we're about to go on the trail, or they ask me what my curry anti-rock is when they see it underneath there, they look at it, they don't know what it is. It really surprises me the number of people that don't know what it is and what it's for. So I thought I'd do a quick little video just to go over the curry anti-rock, what it is, what it's for, why I have it, and why it might be a good choice for you. So what is a curry anorak? It's basically a replacement for your sway bar, or actually it's technically called an anti-sway bar. What is a sway bar? Your sway bar is there to connect your body to the rest of the frame and the axle and everything, so that when you're driving down the highway, your, your Jeep or your car, they're, they're on all car, cars and trucks, doesn't wobble around too much. Uh, that's great for helping keep your car uh, steady, or if you make a sharp turn, you don't want to uh, you know, flop over. Uh, that's why it's there. The disadvantage of it though is that when you go off road, it keeps the body connected to the frame and the axle and it doesn't allow you to flex. So you see a lot of guys going up rocks or on uh, real uh, off camber sections, you'll see their wheels uh, droop or, or flex basically uh, enormously. If you're connected, meaning if you're, you're anti-sway bar is on and connected, you can't get that flex. So uh, what most people do when they go out on the trail, if it's going to be a difficult trail, is they will disconnect their sway bar. Now if you have a Rubicon, and remember this is not a Rubicon, if you have a Rubicon and some land cruisers, rovers, uh, you know, some of the other higher end off-road vehicles, they've got a button that you can push that will disconnect that sway bar for you because the manufacturer knows how important it is to be able to get that extra flex. Now for my brothers and sisters out there that also do not have a Rubicon, they are not a Rubicon as well, we're all one big happy family, what a lot of people will do is they'll, before they get out on the trail, is they get out under the Jeep and they get a wrench and they uh, undo those bolts that uh, hold the regular sway bar uh, down to the frame. Uh, they call that disconnecting. That fully disconnects the body from the frame and the axle. That allows you a lot more flex. It also allows for a smoother ride because it lets your shocks breathe a little more, gives them a little more elbow room so you can bounce up and down on a bumpy road. Uh, when it's off-road and you're disconnected, it's just generally better. Now, of course, the problem with having to disconnect and reconnect is that one, you got to climb down into the dirt, you got to get on your back sometimes. Uh, it's, it's kind of a hassle, it takes some time. Even if you have uh, quick disconnects or quicker disconnects, you still gotta pull the pins, you gotta move the arms up, it's still a hassle. Now you might say, why don't you just disconnect and stay disconnected all the time? Some people do that, but it's a little less safe to do that because when you're on the highway, you're driving to the trail or home from the trail, the body is still fully disconnected from the frame and it's very wobbly, if you, especially if you hit a curve, uh, a sharp curve or even just a little bit of a curve, you'll really feel that you're disconnected and it can feel like you're going to flop over. It's very dangerous, especially if you make an evasive maneuver at 70 miles an hour on the freeway. If you can get your Jeep up to 70 miles an hour, it can be dangerous to drive on the highway at speed when you're disconnected. So most people choose not to do that. What is a Curry Anti-Rock? So the Anti-Rock system is a system that replaces your stock anti-sway bar with their torsion bar system. It's basically a separate bar or a new bar, replacement uh, anti-sway bar that's softer and moves. And it's designed so that when you're flexing, not only does it allow you to flex because it's not connected, I'll show you that in a second, or it's not connected in the same way, uh, it also pushes the other wheel down. So, in, so you're not fully disconnected, uh, but it allows for much more flex as though you're disconnected. And in addition, it's pushing your other wheel down so it's not just dangling the way it might when you're disconnected. So it does its best or does better to give that other wheel more traction by forcing it down. So it's not just that you're disconnected or, or almost disconnected, it's, it's improving your traction as well. The Anorak also is connected all the time. Uh, the advantage is that it still allows you that extra flex. So in addition to giving you more flex than if you're connected, because you are connected, you don't get that flopping around feeling that you get when you're fully disconnected. 
So on the trail, on the highway, you, you're, you're, it doesn't feel like you're gonna flop over all the time. It allows you to control the vehicle a little bit better. Uh, it's just more stable. So it has the advantage of giving you the, the, almost the same amount of flex as when you're fully disconnected, but you are still connected and you maintain more control. So it's sort of a compromise between being connected and disconnected. When you're on the highway, it is a little more looser than if you were fully connected with your normal sway bar. You feel a difference. Uh, it took me a day or two of driving before I got used to it. Uh, it's really not a big deal. I've read on the internet where people say, oh, I got my Anna Rock and I was flopping all around on the highway. I didn't feel it. Most people I talk to don't notice it or you notice it, but you just get used to it. So it's, it's a compromise between being connected and disconnected. And it uh, leans toward being more like you're disconnected. You can see that with the Anna Rock, uh, it's got its own connected arms, they're called. They are connected, I don't know if you can see here, uh, down to the frame, so that helps maintain, uh, or to the axle, that helps maintain more stability. And like I said though, it allows you that more flex. The system is fairly easy to install. Uh, it's bas you basically pull out your old sway bar, which is not difficult, slide the new one in and do some, uh, hook up some bolts. I didn't do mine myself, but if you're even moderately handy with the tools and you have all the tools, it's not a difficult installation to do. Most people do it themselves. I'm a wimp, I don't like to get my soft hands uh, dirty, so I paid to have mine installed. And it was not an expensive installation because it didn't take the installer a lot of time. Now I put a link in the information down below to the uh, Anorak store on Amazon, so you can go there and look at all the details, get more information on it. You'll see that it comes in two flavors. It comes in steel arms, which are black, and aluminum arms, which are unpainted, just raw aluminum. I initially went with the aluminum arms, but there is an issue with the aluminum in that the aluminum is softer than the steel torsion bar. The, the first few weeks that you have it and the first few times you go off road, you have to check and make sure that they are tight because that steel will wear into the aluminum a little and that will uh, loosen up the connection between the two. And if you don't tighten it down, it, will, uh, it can wallow out the teeth in there, it's just a big hassle. I ended up actually switching from the aluminum to the black. Uh, one, because I think the black goes better with the black and orange on the Nata Rubicon, and the steel is a little less expensive. Most people buy the aluminum because it's a little bit lighter, but the, the arms, they're only this long and they weigh a couple of pounds each, so the aluminum is slightly lighter, but it's not gonna make your Jeep go any faster with the aluminum versus uh, steel. Uh, for me, it came down to more of a choice between silver or black, and I ended up liking the black even better. So the big question is, does the anti-rock work? Well, it depends on what you buy it for, but the answer, from me at least, is yes, it does. Number one, with the anti-rock, you don't have to disconnect before you go off-road. It's always in that state of more flex, but still stable. You don't have to do this connect and disconnect thing before and after you're on the trail. If you don't wanna hassle disconnecting anymore, yes, it works, problem solved. Now, as far as does it allow you the same amount of flex as if you're disconnected, it allows virtually the same amount of flex. Uh, if you were to do a full measurement before and after, and people on the internet have done it, you can find it out there. It doesn't flex quite as much, much and we're talking about less than an inch, very small amount. When I put mine on, I was still rubbing my fenders uh, just the same, meaning I was flexing too much. So as far as limiting your flex, to me, that's not an issue. Now, some troll will come on the internet and post that, oh, it, he couldn't flex anymore. Ignore the trolls. If you, if you look at the reviews, and before I bought mine, I read hundreds of reviews because they're not cheap. I wanted to make sure that it was worth it and that it was gonna do what it says it did. You read the reviews, you'll see that you have virtually the same amount of flex. And additionally, you have more control. Like I mentioned earlier, because you're still connected, you, you maintain more control. So you're not flopping around. The body isn't flopping around the way it does when you're fully disconnected. Uh, and that I did notice a difference the first time I went on some off-camber tr bumpy trails. There was a noticeable difference between having the anorak and being fully disconnected. My answer is yes, it does work. I'm very happy with mine. Again, before I, read, uh, before I purchased mine, I read hundreds uh, of reviews. 99% of the reviews that I read, and I think you should do the same thing, is go and do some reviews on Amazon, 
uh, or just search the internet and the forums, most people, almost all, virtually all, are very happy with their anti-rock. So there you have it real quick and in a nutshell, what an anti-rock is and what it does. Uh, number one, it makes it so you don't have to disconnect before uh, you go on the trail and then get down in the mud and reconnect afterward. Number two, it allows just as much, virtually as much flex uh, as when you are disconnected. It increases stability over being disconnected when you're on the, on the trail, gives you more traction. Uh, it is a little bit of a compromise, like I said, between being connected and disconnected. So you will notice it a little on the highway. You'll forget it after driving it a couple of times. You may notice that it's not quite as floppy and uh, loose feeling when you're on the trail. Actually, if you're, if you're hitting bumps and stuff, you, you will notice that. So definitely works, definitely does what it advertises it does. I'm very happy with mine and virtually everybody that I know is happy with theirs. So that's the Curry Anorak. There's a link below in the information. Uh, to check out their store on Amazon for all the details. And full disclosure, if you click that link and then end up buying one through uh, Amazon, they do pay me a full advertising fee. So take a look, uh, buy it from Amazon, buy it somewhere else, I don't care. Uh, but again, very happy, does the job, and the best part is no more getting on your back in the mud after the trails to uh, reconnect. If you have any questions, just post them in a comment below, and we'll see you on the trail.